Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Board. So, Willie, you know, what are we doing here? We're playing Panzer. We're on turn 14, uh, 13, I think it is. Or perhaps the beginning of 14. I, I have to check my notes, which I have in my, my little hand here. And I feel like that a 20 turn scenario of this, at this scale, is too long. Um, I've, I've found the first nine or ten turns went real well, and uh, there was a level of engagement that allowed me to you still have the desire to want to, hey, let's play the next turn and see what happens. Uh, and unfortunately in this, because there's a lot of approach uh, movement, because we're moving from uh, all the way over here onto the map, you really do spend the first four or five turns just kind of snuggling up to those trees over here and uh, and then working out how you're going to make an approach on the city and there are obviously a couple of different tactical approaches you can take and I'm swinging around on this side over here or, or coming in this way which is what I ended up doing and I chose to come in this way because I could pick up uh, the first easy VP point and by using smoke here carefully we managed to actually get in with only uh, the loss of one one tank. So uh, we're deep into it. The the losses have mounted up significantly. For let me see if I can just change the perspective here. You can kind of scoot down here. You can see the loss stack right there. This is a lot of ATGs. Some uh, some of the look armed, lightly armored carriers. Uh, a few trucks that don't really matter, and a couple of a couple of other vehicles, which are in the glare, so you can't really tell what they are. But they're B tens, I think. No, nope. twelves. Anyway, no matter. It's kind of here's where we're at. Uh, the Germans have worked out the. I'm just trying to adjust this camera for you guys, so you can see. I'm going to move over here so I can. Get up there, come on! Okay. So what's happened is the Germans once once they broke through on a, a, a couple of uh, a couple of hexes here. Let me just do this so I can see what you're seeing. Oh no! I zoomed. Stop, shop. You're screwing it up. That was scary. Once, once the Germans breached, uh, got across this bridge here, and then breached some of these building hexes with hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, close assaults with vehicles uh, in and around that area, there was a pretty much a clean sweep, uh, mainly because smoke hindered the shooting of the ATGs from the Soviet side, and you know we'll call it. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, I roll terribly. Well, you know, you're rolling against a, in this game, you're rolling against a table uh, that has a penetration, had a, has a penetration rate uh, and an accuracy rate required to uh, hit a vehicle or hit something at a certain distance uh, through, uh, based on certain circumstances with a unit that has a degree of skill. And my guys, the the Soviets, were all, uh, I think, they were all green. Uh, all the anti-tank anti gunners are green in this scenario, scenario number 20 from the uh, from the playbook. So they yes, they roll badly, but they also they also suck. So uh, they really didn't do a good job of hitting anything, and when they did hit, there was often a non-penetrating. Uh, the rounds, sorry, the rounds penetrated but did no damage. So there was a, a, a series of unfortunate rolls. That combined with the fact that I think that uh, I probably did not play the Soviets as well as I could have, uh, although it's difficult, 
it's difficult to want to try and be more aggressive with the vehicles when you still have some mobility going here on the map. In fact, over here, just off screen, just that way, you know, the Germans have got three more tanks that they're actually trying to, you know, sweep around uh, to capture VP points. Uh, the plan, uh, so, so I got to this point, the beginning of uh, turn 14 or the end of turn 13, that clearly the Germans are, they've, they've bust into the city. They've knocked out, uh, I think, uh, a total of 210 victory points worth of enemy units for the loss of 84. So they have the requisite 90 plus movement, uh, 90 plus, uh, thereabouts, 90 plus victory points margin, but they haven't captured all the victory point locations. So if I looked at this game as uh, purely playing to the goals of the, the scenario, the VP condition of the scenario, I'm just gonna grab a couple of half tracks. I'm gonna race over to this side of the map. Here, I'll show you if I can just turn over here, right here, right there, see that guy? Right there, right here. I, I'm gonna run over, grab those two, that would be three. I need to capture one more, so one of these three here, in the next six turns. And that's very doable, given that I have three full squads here versus two, two squads. Uh, I, I didn't use the Soviet mortar very well, but from a tactical perspective, the Germans are in a much stronger position. Uh, they're actually rolling better. Uh, they do need to clean up this hex here that has an NG unit in it. That'll happen this turn. I've got two half tracks and a tank, uh, and a tank prepared to uh, blast away at it. One of the fun things with Panzer is that you can actually, at least I think you can, from what I'm reading in the rules, you can shoot at the terrain. Uh, I enjoy doing that, especially when there are people in it. A lot of fun. Uh, the game really. So let's talk about, let's finish up about the scenario. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that this is done. I, I'm done with the scenario. I've enjoyed it. It's been uh, an interesting exercise in, in working out how the game mechanics worked. I think you've probably picked up from me in other videos and commentary that I really don't like the sequence of play. I don't like the alternative sequence of play. And I think that it's it's probably the closest thing that I could come to uh, to say that it just doesn't work. And while the historical argument would be, look, the guy who chooses, who wins initiative gets to fire all his guys first and then gets to move second. He gets to fire first because he had the initiative, we had the better command structure or he was more prepared or had better equipment. Okay, I got that. But in a turn that is some, some number of minutes long, we're going to see return fire and we're gonna see opportunity fire happen. And we're, we're gonna have these, 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 this to and fro. And I don't think that just because I fired all my guys first, that I should then sit and watch my enemy move and then I move. I, I, that is inconceivable to me, and, and frankly, it's just, it's stupid. Let me just say that, I'll put it out there and say that it's stupid. So, what I uh, elected to do was take Jim Day's very nicely written up uh, alternative uh, uh, activation sequence and tweak it up a little bit. And what I decided to do was for each formation in the game, and which is gonna be, Works for maybe it's only it's going it's only going to work for larger larger games. I, I don't know. Let me see if I can find one that's suitable. Well, here's from the first playbook. So here we've got uh, one, two, two. This is a tank company. All right. So it's got I, I yeah wrong one. I don't know how I would handle that because I hadn't thought about it. I'm looking at each, so I'm looking at each. Oh, now he's gonna screw it up and not be compelling. I'm not gonna have a compelling argument for why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Let's just say this is two, uh, this was two full formations. So there's a, another formation down here and this formation here. So there's a company of ATGs and there's a company of tanks or whatever the case may be. And you're, um, well, what I'm doing is I'm rolling initiative for e at, 
uh, rolling initiative to see who fires first. And uh, whoever wins, they get to activate one formation. So if the Germans win, they'll move their, they'll fire their Panzer Grenadiers, and then these guys will have uh, an opportunity to fire. And then we will go to the next uh, formation and uh, the next activation of a roll. And keeping all the scenario adjusted initiative roles in place, the, set, the next formation uh, to activate will be whoever wins that initiative role. And if the, the Soviets end up winning initiative through some stroke of luck, I can see great narrative reasons why that would be good. Yeah, the Soviet leader saw what was happening and he turned and fired and boom, he gets it. He beat the, the well-planned German attack to the punch. So it, it can work. And I think taking it by the platoon or company level and, and giving those forces act, act each a role for each one, there's a lot more rolling involved, I am sorry to say, but it's, uh, other than going to some sort of chip pull process, I think it's the only way I can do it that makes me feel like there's more ebb and flow. 80% of the time, most of the German, for instance, in this scenario, most of the German units are gonna fire first. And then the Soviets will have their chance to fire but it'll be, it'll be staggered and sequenced. So uh, not all of the German units will fire. A German unit will fire, and then if there are units here in fire mode, they'll have a chance, and their formation is the one that's rolling, they'll have an opportunity to fire. Then we go to the next activation of the formations, and we pick a second you know, German company, and we pick uh, maybe uh, some guys that are in overwatch mode or whatever, well, they're not going to fire, so the German just goes ahead and he fires anyway. Same comes to movement. When we come to the movement uh, uh, period of the game, uh, we roll and see who, who moves first. And that really then starts to matter uh, what the roles are because both sides want to move uh, and adjust their positions. And as, the, as especially as victory point locations are lost, well, the Soviets want to reinforce, so they want to move a unit. They're going to try and activate that unit and, and have a good initiative role against the Germans. So it, it worked for me in this. That was a terribly convoluted and awful explanation of my approach to it. But that's how I'm playing it right now. And I'll, I'll say this, that the game is really fun to play. It's exciting to roll the dice. I, as soon as I've got an attack that's going to come up, you know, I... All I'm doing I'm right off the bat is I'm rolling to see what's going to happen. Okay, 08. I know as a uh, as an anti-tank gun uh, shot or as a uh, armor-piercing round being fired, I know that that's a hit. I also know now that I'm probably going to have to roll for multiple shots uh, because that's going to I, because I roll so low against the to hit table that there's an opportunity for us to have multiple shot, multiple rounds fired that turn. That's pretty cool. I can tell just from rolling if I'm at point blank range or I'm at uh, medium range, an 87 is probably not gonna hit. So then I just go to my chart and I look up what my, my modifiers are and we're done and we move on to the next, uh, the next, uh, next activation. So the game flows really quickly and you can get through the combats very quickly, even though once I've made this initial roll, I may have to do multiple other rolls it's it's literally one or two more roles and they're roles that you want to make because it makes the game more interesting am i actually hitting on the front or the side am i actually having an opportunity to fire more than once and are all my rounds actually doing any damage and they're the they're the three additional pieces of data that you want to collect and put into the experience to find out whether you brew this sucker up or knock it out or just damage it or hit a track or whatever the case may be Lots and lots of fun. The hand-to-hand -hand combat rules are great. Uh, I really like them now that I've got to experience them a little bit. Uh, I love the close assault where the, the vehicles uh, uh, pounding on each other as well. I uh, still haven't used Air or Artie yet, but uh, the game is fantastic and it really could be, uh, I think with a, a good sequence of play, uh, a revised sequence of play, it could be a much better game, uh, a very, very much better game, and uh, you know, rival the other detailed squad level, individual tank level games that are out there. So thanks, Jim Dave, for putting 
the effort into this uh, second edition. Uh, the rules are extremely well organized. There's lots of tools within the box to help you, and there are also lots of uh, 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 cheat sheets out on the web that you should be looking at and uh, the, rule, the rules layout is pretty good. It's easy to find what you're looking for once you've got an index and uh, I've, I've enjoyed the game enormously. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon so we'll pack this sucker up.